Hello, happy Friday, be it evening, afternoon for you, Susie, or whatever time it is for everyone out there. I hope you've had a great day so far. So today I'm trying something new uh, for Fridays. It's going to going to call it Unboxing the Week, 3 p.m. there. I thought it was still afternoon for you. Yeah, but I'm going to do Unboxing the Week so we can sit here, chat about our week, see how everyone's doing and I'll unbox a couple of games I've yet to unbox instead of just doing them by myself I'll let y'all help me decide what I unbox next so how was everyone's week lurking while making dinner well be if you're gonna lurk you either got I want you to either do the lurk command or tell me what you're making for dinner Chelsea either way so how was your week so far, Susie, since Chelsea's lurking? My week was long, but good. Um, seemed busy, but with a lot of good things going on. Just an okay week. Well, that's not... I hope it could have been better for you. Um, so what's some good things that happened this week, at least, Susie? Besides, of course, we, we got to chat earlier and talk about us being dice goblins and how much dice we have and own. Roof no starting at 7 a.m. Ooh, waking up early. Fig pork chops with sweet potatoes and asparagus. Ooh, that does sound really good, Chelsea. I wish it was game night and you are cooking for game night because that, that sounds really good. Playing board games with a friend, good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Susie. Mm. When, I, when I read that. And Peter's here. Hi, Peter. So we were just getting started. Chelsea was talking about what she's making for dinner right now while she's lurking. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Susie. Once once everything's clear for travel and we can... And, and if you weren't across the country, yes, more consistent game nights would be good. But we can start planning more game nights, hopefully online and in Discord together over the weekends and stuff. And maybe you can start joining me as I play on Monday nights while I'll be playing the game, some of the different games. Either doing some of my preview games that I'll be getting in the mail or teaching y'all some other games that we can play along. Um... Yeah, so my week was pretty good. Probably the strangest thing is the manager at my work was gone for the week because they had a new baby. And, of course, when he's gone, we had an injury at the office. Um, on the shop floor, someone got a hand stuck in one of the large machines and went to the hospital. So I was dealing with some of the paperwork and trying to figure out when they would be back. But they got hurt like right before I got there and were already gone. So it was like, well, I didn't have to see it happen at least, so that was the right side. They did not lose their hand. It was it was basically a, an industrial size sanding machine, and their hand kind of caught against the sandpaper, and it basically sanded their skin down to the tendon. So currently no loss of function, um, but... Yeah, I rushed, rushed to the hospital. They got it taken care of. It just maybe a couple of weeks of very light labor, no heavy lifting and stuff, until, and then they may have a little bit of rehab to deal with. But for the most part, it could have been a lot worse, but still not great that it happened. I'm just glad I didn't have to see it happen. But other than that, I had a great week, and I, of course, got to have a game night with Chelsea. Uh, we went and got... Uh, found a sushi place that she, she knew about, grabbed sushi and Asian food, and then we went back and did game night. I can't remember the name of the game. I'd have to look it back up. But one of those Western tile laying games. That, we've played a lot of tile laying games, Chelsea. I, I think that's what y'all like the most, but I enjoy them just as much, so <laughs> nothing wrong with that. You know what? Now I need to go look up what that game was. I'm 
I can't talk about it and not bring and not know the name. Old West Impresario. A couple years old at this point, but definitely a, a cool concept to it. Yep, there's a the name. Um, yeah, so everyone's kind of building their own town. Um, and then how you lay the tiles next to each other, you can score points for based on the colors next to them or icons on them and how many are in your town. I thought I was doing well, ended up in last place, but I still uh, enjoyed the game nonetheless. I did get to start the game with basically a, uh, a graveyard, so it was very take that against the other players every time I use that tile of, hey, you're going to lose some coins if I choose this tile to activate. But Chelsea told me to, to to use it when I said, hey, I can't decide. Do I want to take take that tile or a different one? She's like, take that, take that. So I was like, okay, you said use it. I'm going to use it against you. <laughs> so that was fun to try out. Uh, did y'all play any new games this week? Am I ready to lose in a game tomorrow? Well... I don't have to win the game. I just have to beat you, Chris. So ultimately, I think the question comes back at you. Are you ready to lose to me tomorrow? Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, Peter, I'm sure you know, and everyone else in, in here seems to know that when, when I go on stream with Chris, uh, the charity board gamer, we have this running thing this year, uh, t keeping tabs of who is winning or doing better of the two of us in every game we play. And Chris doesn't like to admit it, but yes, I am ahead of him right now by a couple of games. Learn Tiny Epic Pirates. Ooh. How, how is it? So you haven't played a full game yet, but that that's one of the ones I didn't get ordered, so I have not got to see it yet. Can the beat Chris in a game badge be earned by just doing better than him? That is a great question. Uh, Chris, you'd have to answer that. Um, I know if you get have to beat me in a game. Well, Charity, I think I think she's I think Susie is asking if they do better than you in the game, but not necessarily win the game. Okay, so and Peter's talking about loving the Rondell idea of, with Tiny Epic Pirates. Um. I found that not enough games use Rondell systems in a unique way. So I, I, I do need to look into that game and see how it uses the Rondell because there's not as many. Yeah, that's fine by me. Yeah, Susie, so you just need to do better than Chris. So if you if you help me beat him tomorrow and I'll help you do better than him, then we'll gang up on him, make him get last place. We'll get you the badge. I'll get another point in our versus system. <laughs> so peter saying that tiny epic pirates is great enjoys the the programmed action ideas think it's going to be a winner of a game uh chelsea did you happen to pick that one up um because if you did sounds like it's one we have to try out at one of our game nights and it also looks like I have a couple of games coming in the mail soon. So, Chelsea, look out. We may be playing some games together soon that I can do review reviews of, I believe. Uh, yes, we all hurt Chris, no matter how much we want to beat him in a game. <laughs> um, I, I think from Lucky Duck Games, their Chronicles of Crime 1900, I'm going to get to do a, a review copy of. Uh, Peter is a Tiny Epic fan, uh, and Chris, uh, I think, one of my first Tiny Epic from Chris. Okay, that's great. I don't get those to the table enough. Um, oh, and Chris is getting a copy of 1900 as well. See, I'm thinking I may figure out how to share the screen on my phone and maybe play on stream if I can make it work. But from what I've looked at 1900, it expands on the Chronicles of Crime idea, but adds in also kind of an escape room style system where there's puzzles and the clues you're gathering, you're going to have to combine them to solve one bigger 
puzzle thing. But if you really need a clue, you can kind of go back to the, the newspaper office and then they can let you either know if you have enough of the clues to solve the riddle or if you should kind of keep keep trying or they can give you hints if you actually already have everything ready. So that's going to be fun to try. Um, so I'll probably bring it over to Chelsea's. We'll try it there and I'll maybe try it on stream as well. And then I also got a playmat for cartographers. The Cartographer Heroes Red playmat just came in today. So I'll be posting a picture of that tomorrow. And then we'll probably play with it on stream at some point. So yeah, a lot of things happening all of a sudden. Past week or so that has made it a really good week. So playing Scythe next Sunday. Yes, we both need to look up the rules. So, when we're playing, we have no excuses of who does better or not. Because we'll play by the rules, and whoever's better at it will win. But yes, that's going to be fun, because for, what, two years now, Chris, we've talked about not having played Scythe before at all. And then we, we kind of agreed together, okay, we will learn the game and play together. And so, I've had a copy for several months now, middle of last year maybe, and Chris recently got a copy, so we are kind of like, okay, we're going to have time to play. Chris was like, we're playing it Sunday. I think we may even play it live on stream. I don't know. Woo! Thank you, the game covered, and everyone joining, uh, everyone part of the raid. Uh, thank you. I am Jaybird the Word. I like to play games and spread joy. Tonight, I am starting a new thing called Unboxing the Week, where... I basically hang out with chat. We talk about our week, how things are going, and then we'll open a few of new games, at least new games to me, and y'all get to help choose which games I'm going to unbox. We'll kind of unbox it together. I'll go over what's in the box and my first impressions of what's in it. Uh, but yeah, so I've recently started streaming. So this is first raid. So thank you for coming. Thank you for the following follows. And hello, Dutch Yoda. I've seen you in other chats. Welcome to mine. So who's all in the chat now? I'm, there's a lot going on. That So we got uh, the game covered. We got Loop85. Uh, MX Siphon. So, uh, Tail Wagon Games. A lot of people I need to get to know now that I'm streaming, starting to stream on my own. Um, but yeah, tell me about your week. What's been going on? Uh, I've been talking about... I got a couple games coming in the mail from to review soon. Um, there are some accidents at work, not involving me, but I had to kind of deal with the aftermath of. Yay, thank you, Game Covered. Uh, so, how, yeah, how have your weeks been? Anything special going on? Try any new games or any new games that recently got that you want to play and learn? Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to be online, and I really appreciate my first raid. Hello, fellow newbie streamer. Yes, uh, so new new as well, uh, Tell Wagon Games is saying, having our second stream next week. Yeah, so tonight is actually my third solo stream ever. Last week, last Friday, was my first time to stream alone. This Monday was my first Monday stream. So this week, I guess, is my first official full week of a solo uh, schedule that I'm trying out. Oh, good night, Chris. Uh, go make dinner. Uh, and I, I know you're you, you're doing that service tonight, and you're preparing it all week. So, best of luck. Prayers be with you. So streaming so far has been pretty good. Of of course, being a new streamer, lower counts, but. I'm okay with it. It only takes one person in chat to make it great. And Peter, so far, has was the first one here, first night, saying, I will be there for you. And so, Puma Peter, you are my first and best follower so far. I'm not sure if anyone will take your top spot. But, yeah, we played Sagrada my first night, uh, kind of played along where I showed you the dice so you could play along at home. 
We played cartographers on Monday, played a couple of games. I taught it and played along. And so my Monday night streams, which I'll probably be doing about two hours or so, I'll be playing games and show and showing them off, teaching them, hopefully picking some games you can play along as you watch as well. Some if you have the game and some you won't need the game to play along. And I keep hearing, yes, yes, as I'm get as there's followers happen and I miss some of the names, but thank you everyone for the follows. It is extremely exciting, extremely helpful. Um, let me see if I can go back and see the names or if it will tell me. I as I'm learning the system, of course. But yes, having a I'm having a great week. Uh, so, thank you, Wannabe Kiwi. Uh, I know that Susie, uh, The Wagon Games, Rainbow Meeple, thank you. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, Geething, Sarah Happenin, Dutch Yoda, Game Cover. Uh, so, a lot of great names that I need to get to know better and hopefully someday meet once it's safe to travel and go to conventions and whatnot again. For those who don't know me, I am originally from Texas. I moved to Maryland both for work and I had planned to be closer to conventions. And then, of course, COVID happened, so no conventions happened last year. But fortunately, once it's safe to travel again, things open back up. I can get to a lot more, have a lot more fun with ever, all my new friends that are either online. Um, I started actually on Instagram, primarily doing pictures every day. I have links probably on my profile somewhere. I don't know where to point because I don't know where it is on your screen. But yeah, um, I'm on Instagram as jbird underscore the word. Uh, do pictures of games every day, talk about them, kind of little short reviews. Um, I've started doing YouTube videos where I either do how to plays, box openings, previews, done a couple of Kickstarter kind of preview stuff. That is just look up play game spread joy with jbird the word. So I, originally I was from the Dallas area. So kind of born and raised in DFW, north of Dallas, then Weatherford, went to school in Fort Worth. So I didn't, I was born and raised in that area, didn't get out of there for 30 years. So I am Texan through and through. Um, so typically you're going to hear me say howdy y'all uh, and welcome. Big, and when I'm in a booth helping out, it's always howdy, come here. Like I want to show you the game. Um but yeah, so Howdy is and y'all are very ingrained in how I talk, even though I'm not there anymore. But y'all is such a perfect word because it encompasses everyone. And so I've talked about y'all are welcome at the table as you all and all. All are welcome at the table. And that's how I like to sp spread joy is be very inviting um, and very welcoming in that I tr we do everything we can not to judge anyone. Yes, thank you for the follow, Scrappy Kid. Um, and so, yeah, it's all about playing games and spreading the joy, be it, be it teaching, walking me to the table, whatever it is that helps bring a smile to your face and brighten your day, I try to do. Uh, so, yeah, tonight we're... Like I said, we're talking about our weeks, and we're going to unbox some games, which I'm going to have y'all help me choose what games to unbox. Some of these are not brand new games as out this year, but they are new to me. I have not opened them yet. I have not played them yet. So I'm going to help let y'all choose what I unbox next, which also means I'm going to learn them soon. So I'm going to switch so y'all can see some of the games I've pulled. It's a minor selection of plenty of games I've to unbox. See if this is the right one. There we go. So tonight I've pulled seven different games, um, and y'all get to help me choose the first one I'm going to dig it into. So we have Trekking the World. We have The Princess Bride. Uh, the new re-release of Carpe Diem. The Whatnot Cabinet. Last Defense. Munchkin and Mazes. And then also the Pop Punko, uh, Funko Verse Back to the Future. So let me know what y'all, what game y'all want to see me unbox tonight. Um, I'll start with one. If there's time, we'll open more than once. Okay, so we got a vote for Princess Bride so far. Um, but yeah, if we have time, I'll open more than one. But I'll do it right here on camera. Y'all can see what's in the box with me. Uh, if you have questions about what you're seeing, I'll go over it. 
Uh, that's just kind of so we can hang out, chat, and have a little bit of fun tonight. Princess Bride. I have that one and still need to open it myself. Well, either that's going to ruin the surprise for you if I open it, or it'll make you that more much more excited for it. So we got a vote for Funkoverse and two votes for Princess Bride, it looks like. So unless things change, I may start with Princess Bride and then move to Funkoverse. Hope to be excited. So that, that's that's good to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way, that I won't ruin it for you. I don't want to have you walk away if we open something you don't want to see yet. Carpe Diem, I know. Chelsea, you've talked about wanting to play that. So yes, we'll open that for sure. Open that soon. That's why I put it in the selection tonight, because I knew you want to see it. Back to the Future fans. Uh, yes, it's been a while since I watched the movies. But yes, I kind of grew up watching those in the household with my with my dad. So a lot of those classic style and I do like how it has two of the figurines which to be honest sometimes I buy the Funko Verse stuff more for the figurines and not always for the game so it'll be interesting how the how they play the characters play in this in this one and if not if not that great I have two figurines that set on the shelf so unless y'all say more I want to change the votes I think I'm going to start with Princess Bride, and then we'll move on to Back to the Future. I'll set these aside out of the way. Uh, let's keep Funkoverse close at hand, because I know y'all want to see it. Oh, and y'all get to see the purple mat. So, the past few days I did a, I guess, kind of a poll on Instagram and Facebook asking which color mat I should start using more because I actually bought four colors because they were a on sale and I needed something nightmare before Christmas funk over so far I have Harry Potter and Batman so far which the Batman actually being blue like the original comics was really cool to see but yeah I'm gonna show off these mats real quick because I had a simple black that I asked people about. Of course, red always pops. Can't go without a red. I got blue, a nice navy, and the purple. And more than 50% of the votes I received said purple. And a lot of them said because it's in my slogan. And I completely agree with them. And so thank you for helping me choose which mat to consistently use more which some of the some of them i will switch to on occasion but you're going to be primarily seeing purple um so now yes let's get to the princess bride oh thank you yep purple so purple kind of first stemmed from a little so a little bit more about me being from texas and going to school in fort worth i actually went to tcu i am a horned frog for life Others, and yes, we would also say horny for life because we were the horned frogs. And the, the purple, white, fight, fight. So, but yeah, so purple has kind of been ingrained in my decorations for the longest time and whatnot. And so that kind of deep gradient purple was just kind of one of the first choices I had to use. And my slogan, the play game Spread Joy, was uh, actually helped out uh, who helped me make it was board game angel on instagram she does graphic design stuff so i reached out to her this year to really update my slogan and logo she did a, an amazing job with it of course she she did the die and as the o for me the the a as for play uh that was kind of my logo already we updated it a little bit with her help but yeah, uh, she definitely did an amazing job helping me make this slogan, making it pop, and it's really stood out and something I love now. So, The Princess Bride. Uh, ages 10, 10 plus, one to four players, as we can see, from Ravensburger. So right on top we got our rule book. Now if there's anything you want me to go over in the rule book or anything like that, just speak up. I kind of typically do a quick flip 
kind of show what it looks like, how, how good pictures are, how, how small or easy to read the writing is. But I do like how first page it talked about components. So, so there's some games that won't tell you what components come in the game or list it as specifically. You always search and try to figure out what you're, what, what you're looking for while playing. So I do like this immediately telling me what all the counters are and very specific saying, showing the shape, the picture on, on it, and what it is. And then immediately into setup. And then it has like a game overview. Like the fun little reference of everybody move. <laughs> so of course, it's, it looks like it's using a lot of stuff from the movie. And even art from the movie. A bit stylized. Um, so it looks like there's chapters to it. Um, looking at these last few pages. Yeah, so pretty straightforward rule book. That's easy to read. Shows what's going on. So that'll be that'll be nice to look through and really learn the rules. And then we got an adventure book. Okay, so that is like a cardboard style book, full size of the box. Again, says player count, ages, and says it's 15 minutes per chapter. So that's pretty quick to play. I really like the everybody move. Yeah, that, that was kind of a, a fun thing. It looked like they added along how, the how to play because on, on your move it's right next to the move so it's I really enjoyed the movie too it has been too long since I've watched the movie um, but on occasion I do quote it just like everyone else because that is a very quotable movie that is hard to forget top 10 overall movie for me it's been a while since I've done a top 10 list of movies. That would, that would be hard to figure out. Because so many movies are good for different reasons. Okay, so it looks like this book opens up and acts like a map when you leave it open on the table. So. Depending on the pieces, um, and this is not necessarily wanting to stay perfectly flat. So you may have to put something on the edge to keep it flat while playing. Watch it every few weeks and will along. I'm not sure I could watch any movie every few weeks. Probably the closest I've gotten to watching consistently is I'm into musicals. So I'll put on probably every couple months I've watched like Les Mis or Sweeney Todd. Just, I don't know. They're fun. And you can put them on in the background and still get work done And once you listen to them enough. So, it talk, so it's kind of chapter-based. Uh, it looks like there's challenges for each chapter. It gives you uh, the rules for the chapter, plot table. Uh, Book of Mormon. I've seen that a couple times. Uh, Chelsea, heading out so we can have dinner, have a beautiful evening. Thank you, for Ch Chelsea, for stopping by and joining while you can. I hope you enjoy your dinner. It sounded delicious what you were making earlier. Um, what, one of these days for, for game night, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll convince you to, to cook instead of us going out. But either way, have an amazing evening. I hope it's full of joy. And we'll probably talk tomorrow as, on Discord as we plan other things going on. Okay, so this book. Okay, so we got the ship. Um, definitely, it looks like the maps are laid out differently for the chapters. But yeah, it talks about the rules for the chapter, the plots, challenges. So yeah, I, I could see each chapter definitely feeling different in the way they play. It's not just going to be oh, one minor rule change or a little bit harder. It's going to be a little bit definitely different because we got like a damage track here the last story didn't have it at all i think that first one had chores so yeah so it really looks like you're progressing through the movie and locations from it and potentially things that happened in the movie we got the aisle over here it'll make a miracle it'll, no it'll take a miracle sorry
And then our last chapter is having fun storming the castle. Let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. And to win the game, it shows this kiss left them all behind. Requires complete all of the challenges and reward you win the game. So very thematic, of course, and of course the end. You can't have the end of that without them together. So let's look at the other components. Ooh, of course, minis, we can't not look at the minis first. Nice, simple as a block with a hole in it, so it doesn't get hold the air. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let's do this. I'm gonna change to my other view so y'all can see the minis in better detail. Hopefully, they show up well. Looks like, and all these minis are different colors. Tell me if there's one you want to see more detail on. On this one, we're actually in the middle of our sword fight duel, putting you on guard. Now, it is a purple mini, but I won't say it's my favorite because not the best character in the movie, of course. Even though we already talked about purple being awesome. That yellow is a little bit harder to see, I guess, on that camera. Uh, and there we go. Now we're ready for a duel. we got our other... We got someone else out with the sword. I believe this is... Is this what actually Wesley? With, once he has his sword. Always wanted to be the Dread Pirate Roberts. And what would you do if you were the Dread Pirate Roberts? While he answers that, I'm going to open up the next baggie of goodies. Okay, so first off we have... The grandson and grandpa. So, the grandson. I'm telling you, you're messing up the story. Now get it right. Now, I'm sure I'm messing up the story too as I explain stuff that's going on because it's been so long since I've seen it. So you can tell me if I'm not getting it right. You would do pirate stuff. And then grandpa is... Do you want me to go on with this? All right, then. No more interruptions. I saw Chris Sheridan at Emerald City Comic Con. His panel was really lovely. Plunder motor. <laughs> okay. Now let's look at a lot of those tokens that that rule book was talking about. I'm sure a lot of these are a bit different. I'm going to move the minis. Start. So first off, we got some of these red tokens. No, oh, there we go. There's the image. You gotta turn them, turn them the right way to see that silhouette. Really cool to see. And we have five of those in the box. Now we got some little tokens with fire on them. Looks like that. There we go. A little bright right there, wasn't it? And let's see what else we got. So we got some of these stars. Let's see how many of those we have. Looks like five potentially. Oh, time to do some chores. Let's find all of the all of the the wood piles. There we go. Is that showing up on camera? Well, tell me if it's too bright, too dark. I will update it for you. Looks like we got another fire token. 
digging through trying to avoid all these rats of unusual size or rodents of unusual size however it went like I said it's been a little too long since I watched the movie okay so we got some of these castle tokens with locks on them that we got our mask Is it rats or rodents of unusual size? I cannot remember which it was supposed to be. Thank you. Was it rodents? Okay, so we got a crown. Rodents. Okay. So we got hands in quicksand. We got a couple of spear. Uh, are those spears? See how that, that looks. And we got our rodents of unusual size. They're for sure unusual. So we and then we got our skull tokens. We got a ship that's sailing. Looks like with an just an S, I'm not sure if it's for South or something else, and we got an M. Okay, so let's see what else we got. Our next Ziploc. Of course, this one also has a hole in it. We got uh, some reference cards. Uh, so four cards, tarot size. Uh, looks like they're player reference cards. Uh, talking about move, storytelling, draw, plot, and discard, so turn order. So that's always helpful. I always appreciate when a game has reference cards so you don't have to go back to the rule book as you're playing. And we have a deck of cards. Now let's see if this actually has a quick release on it. So, sometimes cards do, sometimes they don't. I always appreciate when they do so I don't have to pull out the knife and risk cutting the cards. There we go. Nice, easy to grab, quick release. So you won't have to worry about how easy it is to open. And hello, Panda Angel. Uh, rodents of unusual size scared me when I first watched the movie. I don't think I was scared, but then again, I don't think I was super young when I watched it. But yes, they are indeed scare-worthy. Okay, so we got a couple of different card backs. I'm going to set the box aside for the moment. So we got our regular the Princess Bride backing. We got and then we got green ones. So this green deck appears to be numbered uh, one through twenty. Uh, looks like they have some quotes on them. Just pick out a couple. A book. Has it got any sports in it? Uh, then number five is, when's it get good? Well, honestly, the whole thing's good. Why are you asking that, kid? Of course, a response. Wait. Just wait. Back to lurk. Gotta go to the post office. Well, thank you, for Panda, for stopping by. Throw me a lurk in because we want to talk about you and I love what I've set up for the lurk. We'll make sure it works. Just exclamation lurk if you want to lurk. Yeah, so even if you can't stop in and chat, just, just coming by lurking and listening. We love that you're here because we know life gets busy and you're still amazing for stopping by. So, if you like to lurk, just let me know. And we can talk about how great you are for still being here. Let's try another quote. Uh, Grandpa, what what did you read, read me this thing for? And Grandpa might just reply, you want me to read this or not? And then 20, uh, because we can stop now if you want. So let's see what the other deck of cards is about. Now, of course, I did not 
read the rules, so I don't know how those cards are used, but still fun to read the quotes. So here, so we got some courage cards, it looks like. These have, it looks like the ra the rodents. I can probably show these on the other screen to help you all out here. Let's, yeah, so we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those courage cards showing the rodents. Next up we have revenge cards. Because of course, you killed my father, prepared to die. And it looks like we have eight of those as well. And coming up next, we have some intrigue cards. Looks like a mask on it. I'm trying to hide the identity. And those also have eight. And now we get to the love. And again, eight of those cards. So it looks like there might be eight of each of these cards. We have Adventure, which let me show you it both ways because it does have the ships turned both ways. And potentially everyone's top five quote, if not number one quote, as you wish. And this one allows you to choose a player. That player draws a card from the story deck. They may give any player up to two cards from their hand. What he meant was, I love you. The shrieking L's always scare, eel, eels always scared me. <laughs> And then we have a nice M-L-T. It's a mutton, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. When the mutton is nice and lean, and the tomato is ripe. And then, of course, since we've already talked about it in the rule book, and we love it so much, everybody move! So you may move each character one space. Excuse me. Pardon me. Senor, it's important. Physique, please. And then we have, sir, we're in a terrible rush. And you may move one character up to three spaces. You rush a miracle man. You get rotten miracles. So yes, never rush a miracle. If you want it done right, you take your time. And of course, when playing a board game, especially if it's a co-op, you always say, I hope we win. Where we choose a player, they draw two cards from the story deck. Don't pester him. He's had a hard day. Hopefully no one here has had a hard day. If not, hopefully being here together is making it better. To blith, which means to bluff. Well, that is inconceivable. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. So each player may discard any number of cards and draw that many cards. Uh, one thing we won't do is skip to the end, because we're not done streaming yet tonight, are we? Uh, so do not draw a plot card this turn. Uh, yes, a very strange wedding. <laughs> yes, reading all these quotes on the bottom is, is so fun to great. We're when, when cards and stuff actually have extra stuff to draw you into the story, it's so so much more enjoyable. And we have a little wild, wild card. Let's see what it says. Oh, wait. It says nothing. That's wild. Uh, this card can be used as any type of story card. And it looks like the rest of the deck are those wild cards. So most of those other story-based uh, story ones that were quotes are only had three each. This These wild cards actually have nine. So yeah, that is what came in. Well, I guess I can show off this insert. It is standard cardboard, not plastic, not not necessarily custom formed, but it does have custom printing on the cardboard. Now it's enough different spaces to put all the stuff into it, and it has the bags that you need for all the chits and tokens. 
So I do appreciate that, that things won't be flying in the box as you turn it sideways, put it on the shelf, or carry it to game night. So yeah, if you have any questions about what it is or what you've seen so far, let me know. I'll show, show it off on camera again, or I'll pack it up and we can pick our next game. Oh, thank you, Peter. It is... I, I'm having a lot more fun opening it on camera and talking to y'all about it than if I was doing it alone. Because I would rush through it when it was... If, if I'm alone. What's next? I think people voted for Funko Pop Back to the Future. Which... I guess my concern is, okay, so I have this big thing of cards right here, and I only have so many backs. So that's my first concern about this game, is I may have to get one more baggie for the card deck. But yeah, that, that, that's something I try to review any time I do an unboxing. Will it need additional bags? Will you need any kind of additional storage system or anything to help you not have it completely fall apart when moving the box. A couple of my videos, I've even done a shake test. But yeah, that was really fun to open, especially with all those quotes to read. So for now, I will put the cards in their spot, right there, which they'll probably stay in place, no issue, because of the storybook right on top. I do like that there's no... Like when, when you have punch boards to deal with, unless you put them underneath the insert, it's a lot of extra space. You didn't have to worry about that in this box. It was purely packed in tight, no issues. So, the shake test. Pretty good. Even without the cards and anything, there's no issue. So yeah, so that passes the shake test, probably fine on your shelf. Not quite a box fart, but tight enough fit. You can hear the air coming out. I buy lots of little baggies from a local store. They're much better quality than dollar store and are just as cheap. Quite often don't use the bags that come with the game as they're often too big. True, there are several games where the bags are too big, too small, too tight. Maybe they don't have the error in it. Now, we do like to have joke in the industry that have too many small bags, it can look like a junkie. Especially when we're dice goblins and we like that click clack and have all the little baggies to try to put it in. So next up, I believe we said it was going to be... Where did I put it? The other side of me. So, Funkoverse, strategy game, Back to the Future. This one says it's ages 10 and up for two players. Now, I believe all of the Funkoverse games are set so you can mix and match them together. Um, lots of those too, therefore lots of little bags. Yep. Yep, I was talking to Susie earlier today online, uh, talking about how we're both dice goblins, and Susie runs... I'm going to get this name wrong. So, Susie, if you want to post it in chat for me, it is drag, uh, something Dragon Dice. I'm going to get it wrong. I need to look it back up. But, yeah, she actually helps sell dice. Um, you can find her on Facebook. Red Dragon Dice. Yeah, so everyone look up Red Dragon Dice on Facebook. She is in Canada, so I don't know how easy it is for her typical sales to go to the U.S. for, I know a lot of the friends on Twitch are U.S., but we do have some Canadians and Europeans that like to stream as well, so, but yes, she, I was looking at all the, the pictures she had posted of dice today, and they were some really pretty dice. Only board gamers and dealers. <laughs> yep, for the bags. So, first off, we got our, those. Okay. Y'all saw that. Um, so, I'd, Susie does not have a website as shipping is expensive, but if people want to get some, we can do chat. Yeah, so reach out to Susie 
if you're interested in getting dice. But yeah, so my only concern with some a lot of these Funko Pop games is how tight some of these inserts are. Because I wish these came out a little bit easier. Because these are tight. Like I may, yeah, you can see this is, they will not come out on their own very easily. That is a struggle and a half, I'm telling you. So let's do this. So unfortunately that is probably an insert I will not keep, which I know they use these inserts just to show it off in the box. Yeah, this is one of the few games where and I actively get rid of the inserts. Okay. So, inserts are typically good, but man, this was tight. Yeah, worried about breaking the insert. I'm going to set that aside. I may or may not put it back in. But yeah. First, we got our Marty McFly. Classic red jacket, red shirt, and jeans look. And we got Doc. Can't have him without the white hair. Now, it would be kind of cool if he had his lab coat instead of just all white. But I understand it might be a little tricky to make that kind of figure. But cool nonetheless. Now let's get to see what kind of things they are going to hold on to. That looks like gems. Oh, there we go. Yes. So, of course, like my, most Funko Pop games, these come with your standard stands where one foot of the figurine goes on it. Yeah, exactly. You saw it fall out, too. We have our hoverboard. You can't have Back to the Future without the hoverboard. So, I have to put it on, on the hoverboard now. There we go. And he's now riding down the street on the hoverboard. Let's see how well he actually stands on it, though. Will it hover? Will it not? A little hard to get him to balance while on the hoverboard. Oh, it looks like, so that's what I was missing. The bottom of the hoverboard actually has a hole as well. So it looks like we have to put the hoverboard on the base. Yep, exactly, Susie. And I'm, I'm going to put the black base on it because we want, I want the clear base on Doc. Oh, nice. And there he is. He's going to stand. And the cool thing is it does leave that little bit of gap under the hoverboard. So now it looks like he's hovering. So let's put Doc on his stand real quick. Now, I don't know who else watched it last night. Um, who was it? Uh, I'm blanking on the name. It was Banzanator was streaming last night as part of an April Fool's thing. She was doing a box fart comparison stream, ranking the best box farts for games. And the game that won happens to be one of my favorite games, Goo Gong. So, if you want to have a really good box fart, go test out your Goo Gong box if you happen to have the game. And so we got some tiles. Let me switch back to my other view. Make sure you get to see what we got going on. So we got townsperson tile. We got our dinner patron. I'm going to try to organize these by the color because I don't know which ones they go with yet, but we'll figure that out soon enough. So those have uh, B, C, what other numbers we got in here? We got A, we also got D. Looks like this has same thing on both black or white side. And again, and again. Looks like we have a flag and a star. A couple of the classic 
do not pass style. Got some blue swirls. Maybe a flag or something on that one. This one looks like a gear. This is black or white, depending on for two different players. Switch them between if you're playing the black or the white side. Um, kind of looks like the shape of potentially the crystals. I'm not sure if, who else has played this. That is awesome. I'm sad I missed that. Oh yeah, talking about the stream last night. Definitely, it was really fun to watch. I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but yeah, I think Chris actually raided into her into her stream, and it, she was like halfway through raiding them. I stayed watching for an hour as she finished up. It was probably the funniest stream I've watched in a long time. Um, yeah, so these, and then we got some of these resin, kind of like crystals. It looks like they're kind of cut out on the bottom. I don't know if it's bottom or the top. I do like how they catch the light, though. But not the loudest. After a couple of times, it was just silent. Thank goodness, it's not deadly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so some, some of the boxes she had were, would not make any noise or very little. And, yes, there was the jokes about silent but deadly farts. There were some squeakers. Uh... What was the game? Uh, Venhos or something like one of them. Uh, Concordia, maybe? That was all about wine and like they kept making jo jokes about the grapes gave you gas because it was one of the top games as well. And then uh, Great Western Trail had a lot of had a lot of good box farts. Both, but Gugong had the best reverse fart is why everyone really voted for it because it would it would make noises opening and closing. Uh, the Great Western Trail had some good, good ones, and so we had like jokes about food on the trail and stuff. So now we got some dice. Uh, pretty standard plastic. They're not very heavy. Um, if you've seen these games before, they're. The but it does have custom engraving on each of the dice, engraved and paint and then filled in with white. I like how it's not just painted on less likely to come off. Yeah, beans. So, because the, the rating system was like S for like, I don't, I can't remember what the S stood for, but then it was like A, B, C, D. And at first we were talking that it, was, it almost earned a B for not enough beans. But then all of a sudden it started making a lot more noise. So the, the beans released and did their due. Okay, so we got some of our stuff in one of these really long ziplocs that a lot of these Funko Reverse games have. Uh, so, got some, looks like, cooldown tracks. See if there's anything on the back. Ooh, now that's some nice. That's really cool art. We got the tracks from the DeLorean on fire. Dock in the background. Oh, goo gone. <laughs> Farts be gone. <laughs> yeah, so goo gong. Um, yeah, was, A, one of my favorite games. But yeah, it was... The noises it made was brilliant last night. Okay, so we got a couple of... So we got uh, leaders, uh, courthouse square flags so different types of setups it looks like uh territory cafe 80s uh so the two different sides of the map we got the cafe and the square it looks like that we'll be looking at the board in a moment and the control game for inside there Susie, it has a great solo option as well you really need to try it out um if you enjoy a good worker placement game, which I believe you do because we've played some together, um, it uses cards as worker workers in your hand each round, but you typically have to play a card higher than what's at the current location, and you're switching the cards from your hand with cards at the location, so the cards you pick up 
or for the next round. Yeah, so work replacement is definitely one of my top choices as well. Um, but yeah, just the way you have to plan ahead in Gugong works really well. And it, it may take a game or two to really get your he head around everything that's going on for some people. Um, but it, it quickly became one of my top games. Okay, so now we got a very... Which I, I know Funko likes to do this because they're box size and stuff, but that is kind of my one concern. They have this awkward six fold, if you can see that. So it comes up here, comes up here, shifts in the middle. So folding these is never the easiest. Oh, the Jurassic Park one. Yeah, that, that is one I want to look into getting to next. So, of course, we got the 80s diner right here in the middle. Classic location from the movie. Uh, so, yeah, it's a two-player game sitting across from each other. So it has places for all your cards, which is nice. So you don't just have to put them on the table. Which So that's why the board's so big. So, the 8... The diner map is definitely smaller and do less and it looks like this side of the map you're gonna have to keep cards on the table uh, but yeah this is town square it looks like of course we have to have the clock tower I'm gonna move it so you can see it this gotta have the clock and we gotta have the truck with the dung and the manure pile and let's take a quick look at or rule book. Okay, so it does say there's a how to play video that you can go watch. It gives you the, the web address for which it's cool when they do that because a lot of people really like the videos nowadays. Now, I kind of do both. I watch the videos and I like to read the rules. It's because inevitably every video will potentially miss something. And I know because I try to make those videos now. It is hard to get every single rule right in a video. You, you think you're done, you go back, you're like, wait, I missed that tiny thing that's super important, but I already posted the video. Do I redo it? Or do I just make a note on the video? So yeah, I, I like to read the rules as well. Um, so again, we got, oh, it looks like we got great component list right here. Goes over a character card. Uh, so that's really helpful for first time players. Uh, it kind of goes over the tracks and the tokens you're getting. Even has a first game set up, so that helps a lot. Uh, so yeah, t first game set up, of course. Like, and then going through it step by step. Arrows pointing at the board. To walks you through how to play a game. I guess there is a lot of words right here versus very little pictures on this page. Preferably I like a, a little bit more visual stuff. Because if you get too much too much to read in one, it becomes blocky and hard to really want to stay d dug into it. I, I like that visual right next to what I'm reading. But I'm a visual person. Some people prefer just reading. Okay, so the full experience. So that for some people, opening that page, that's just a lot of read, a lot to read. But it does have good headings at least and good numbering, so it's breaking up that blocking. Uh, it tells you how to use the map. Talks about adjacency because every every game I play, we're always questioning: is adjacent orthogonal or also diagonal? So it's good that this clarifies right here what you can see, what what, clear, what are walls, and so what you can do if you have line of sight, uh, how to move, what you can move through, what you can't move through straight cannot move diagonals and such uh talks about challenges resolving uh, challenges are basically attacking and fighting with each other uh, using abilities which it goes over right here with the different symbols traits a decent glossary of, of terms and then it looks like on the back it's advertising uh, the the Jaws one, and it's let's see what they call it. it includes two uh, 
game figures the shark and Quint come in that game. With the maps being the Orca and South Beach. I'm a little... Su okay. So you can only see that it says Jaws on the small picture of it. It doesn't actually say Jaws at all on the back. I'm a little surprising that for that advertising it doesn't put Jaws in big bold. But that's not the point. The point is we're talking about this actual game, Back to the Future. And a few car things I did not pull out were some cards. So in this large bag... We have cards, we have, so the back, nice, simple, vibrant artwork. And then we have the dinner patron, townsperson. We have Doc, Marty, and we also have the hoverboard. Kind of describes what they do, their abilities, their range, and stuff like that. So yeah. Probably the favorite thing about this is, of course, the art concept, the minis and figures. I need to play it, um, see how it is. It's been, a, I don't play as many two-player games. Um, a, I live alone, and so when I do get to go play games, it's with a group. But I have nothing against two-player games, so I'll enjoy trying it out once I do get a chance. But yeah, that, that's what, um, I probably won't reuse that insert those figures were really hard to get out. But for those who don't care as much as me, that is a really good insert. All the pieces fit in it. They're not going to move around as much. So no big deal. Uh, well, I've hit just over an hour. Most of the time I have for today because I have to get, go get ready for a playtesting event that I help lead in a Discord channel. So, I do hope everyone enjoyed unboxing these with me if you have any questions about the games do let me know i'll try to answer them real quick or if there's anything else you want to chat about i do have a few minutes which playtesting event do i do i lead so i help with the playtesting event for weird giraffe games the discord is actually what is the, the weird raptor games discord because it combines uh, Galactic Raptor and Weird Giraffe Games. We do playtesting every Friday night at 7 p.m. Central, and primarily TTS games that designers are doing from all ranges. The game cupboard, thank you for rating and dropping in, um, and, and thank you. It, I really do appreciate you, you doing the raid, coming in, staying here. It, it, it means a lot uh, as I get started. And I'm, I'm sure you understand as a fellow streamer that every person in chat means a lot and helps a lot. So thank you very much. Uh, oh, very cool. I'll have to check that out. We are trying to do more playtesting. Let me, which that Discord is very open. And I can, let me, give me a second. I will actually go get an invite and I will let you... For those who want to join the Galactic Raptor Discord for place testing and other things going on, I will get a link. So incoming, here's the link. Yeah, so we'll be starting in just under an hour over there. Uh, we kind of do a small point system where the more you play someone else's games, you get points, and those points get put into a raffle for free games. Because we tend to have so many games and so many playtesters that instead of trying to say, hey, you need to test this many hours for however many tests you get tested, um, it's hard to track that for everyone. So we just, hey, you show up, you get a point for the event. Every half hour you play, you get a point, and then we put those points into raffle. And so that incentivizes people to help playtest more. And then some people don't care about the raffle. And so they've started talking about giving those points to players who help test their game so you can earn even more points. Well, not a problem if you can't join tonight, of course. But yeah, they do that every Friday. Um, and they do a lot of different game design discussions going on.
And so that that's something I help with, being that I used to help in the Weird Draft Games booth at conventions before, of course, everything shut down. So I kind of transitioned to one of their Discord mods managers, and I'm currently responsible for playtesting. But yes, so thank you everyone for showing up tonight. It, it definitely meant a great deal to me. I enjoyed this. My intent is for every Friday night starting at 6 p.m. Eastern to do this right here. It's And I'm calling it unbox, Unboxing the Week. So we chat about the week, unbox a couple of games. Now, next week I will not be doing it as I will be joining my co-host, Chris Goodlett. He is the charity board gamer and we are doing a charity stream next Friday and Saturday over 24 hours of gaming to raise money for... The short term is for the house. It is the house of afros, capes, and curls. I probably got that wrong. But we're doing the big charity stream next weekend. So I won't be able to do this with y'all. But I do hope y'all come come by chat as we're streaming on his channel. So I'm going to call that a night so I can go grab some dinner. Um, I, I need to f work on figuring out how to do the raid system. Once I figure that out, we'll start raiding with everyone because I really appreciate being rated. Um, I will at least minimum tell you who is streaming and suggest someone to go watch because I can do that until I figure out the raids. Yes, thank you, Tailwagon Games. I do hope you have a wonderful night as well. So I don't know how much longer she'll be on, but I what I want everyone to, who has time to look up Jess underscore CCG. She is currently streaming, painting some minis. Um, she, a Game Freak Geek Girl, she's awesome as well. But I know Jess is working on building up her channel as well. So as many that we can send her way and help her out. Uh, so we build each other up is kind of the goal here, of course. And so knowing that she's working on her streams, I want to help support her as well. So with that, I'm going to call it a night and my official sign off is thank you for watching. And as always play games and spread joy. So th thank you and good night.